You made some sourdough starter and it's bubbling, it's rising and falling. Now what? Hey all, I'm Renee and I'm here to show you how to keep your sourdough starter from dying and to keep you from going insane by having to feed it every single day for the rest of its life. Of course, if you're making bread every day, you're gonna have to feed it every day, and that's okay. If you're making a lot of bread, you may even feed it every eight to 12 hours. But if you're like me, I don't eat bread very often, so I may make a batch once every month or so. And if I had to feed my starter every day, I'd probably give up making bread altogether. So what do you do? Well, first, let's go over the basics of feeding once your starter is thriving. Like I stated in my video, Video about creating your sourdough, it's a living organism and it needs to eat to stay alive. You need to give it water and flour every day and the amount that you feed it depends solely on you and your plants. There is a feeding ratio that looks like this, sourdough to water to flour. The little dots mean two if you're not familiar with that annotation. And the minimum you need to feed your starter is a one to one to one ratio. That's one part sourdough to one part water to one part flour. The sourdough is always a one in this ratio, but the amount of water and the amount of flour you add can be more than one. So when I feed, I will remove 30 grams of starter and place it into a clean jar then add 30 grams of water, stir that, and then add 30 grams of flour and mix until there's no lumps. By the next day, you'll have about 90 grams of starter. The reason you don't keep all 90 grams is because at some point, you're gonna end up with a house full of starter and you're gonna be going through a ton of flour just to feed it. So we only keep a small amount every day out of what we've made the day before. Oh, and what do you do with that starter that's left over? Well, keep watching and I'll let you know. Now, the feeding ratio is great for keeping it alive, but what if you need to make bread and you need, say, 100 grams of starter? The 80 or 90 grams that you have from the night before isn't going to be enough to get you there, and you still need to put some aside so you can continue to bake later on down the road. So, the evening before I plan to bake, I'll feed my starter at a higher ratio, usually a one to two to two or a one to three to three. So I'll take 30 grams of starter and add 60 grams of water and 60 grams of flour if I'm doing a one to two to two. If I'm doing a one to three to three, that would be 30 grams of starter 90 grams of water and 90 grams of flour. All I'm doing is taking the amount of starter that I have and multiplying it by the next number in the ratio, whether it's a two, three, four, five, and so on. And that gives me the amount of water and flour that I need to add. The next morning, I'll have enough for what I need for my bread recipe and enough to keep 30 grams of starter that I can put aside and keep feeding for when I'm ready to bake again. The ratio that you decide to feed your starter will all depend on how much you need for the amount of bread you plan to make. But for daily feeding, the one to one to one ratio is the easiest to remember and it wastes the least amount of flour. If you find this video helpful, please give it a like and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. It truly means a lot when you do. Now, again, I don't bake every day and I don't wanna feed something every single day because I really don't want to add any more to my to-do list, nor do I want to use that much flour to keep it alive. So what do I do? I feed my starter at the one to one to one ratio, then immediately put it in the refrigerator for a week. What the refrigerator does is it slows down the bacteria and yeast so they consume the food at a slower rate. In other words, what takes them a day to go through at room temperature now takes them a week to consume. This is way more manageable than feeding a starter every day. Now you may wonder, well, what if I don't plan on baking, but maybe twice a year? And even a weekly feeding is too much to keep up with. Well, you can always dry some, or if you have a freeze dryer, that's even better. And I'd even recommend that you do this at some point in case something goes awry and you lose your current starter. Strange things happen all the time. Take a small portion of your starter out of the jar and feed it separately. Once the bacteria and yeast have eaten, 
So after it rises and just starts to fall, you're gonna wanna dry the starter. Now I made a decent amount so I could dry a lot of it. You don't have to make that much. In order to dry it, take the starter and spread it thinly on a parchment paper, wax paper, you can even use a plastic plate. Um, just as long as you can get it thin and you don't mind keeping it on it for maybe days at a time. So I'm gonna spread this out. Just kinda gonna do this. So get as much of it out of it out as I can. The reason why you want to spread it out thin is because you you want it to dry and it needs to dry thoroughly. So the thinner it's spread out, the quicker it's going to dry and the better it's going to dry. So now I've got it pretty well thinned out. The starter needs to dry at room temperature until it is completely dry. And I mean completely dry. The amount of time it's gonna to take to do that depends on your environment. Like everything else with making sourdough starter or bread, if it's warm and dry in your house, it'll dry a lot quicker. If it's humid and cool, it's gonna take a lot longer. Um, it could be ready in a day or a week. So just be patient. When it's thoroughly dry, it will peel off the paper and be brittle. Now you're gonna break the dry starter into small pieces and place them in an airtight container and store it in a cool, dark place. Oh, and don't forget to label and date it, especially if you're anything like me and have a ton of jars all over the place. It's too easy to forget what's, what's what sometimes. And if it's thoroughly dried, it can last a very long time. Definitely months, years. I read somewhere it can be viable at 10 years. Well, I'm not sure I'd wait that long, but you know. Then when you're ready to start using it again, you are going to take 30 grams of the dried starter and add 60 grams of warm water and stir it occasionally to dissolve the chips. And this could take maybe three hours, but once it's dissolved, you can add 30 grams of flour, mix and lightly cover and let it rest for 24 hours. After 24 hours, you're gonna add 30 more grams of water and 30 grams of flour to all the starter in your jar. It should start to become pretty active, but the amount of time that it, that, that takes will again depend on the temperature in your house. After another day, go ahead and add another 30 grams each of water and flour. You're still not discarding any of it, of the stuff that you've had in the jar before. You're just adding to what you already have. And once it's really active, you can start the regular feeding process and you're ready to bake. Oh yeah, about that sourdough you don't use, what we call the discard. Well, you can simply just throw it out in the trash, which honestly I do most of the time anyway because I don't bake a lot. Or you can add it to baked goods such as brownies or pancakes. There's a ton of recipes out there that you can add your sourdough discard to and it gives it just a little extra flavor to whatever you're baking. I have used it in brownies before and it was really good. I've also mixed it into my chicken's feed and they love it. I mean, it is beneficial bacteria and, and yeast, so it is good, but I haven't found anything that discusses the safety of feeding discard to them, so I, I don't do it regularly. But if you have chickens and you feed sourdough discard to them, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear about your experience. And thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with me here on Tater Town. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe so you can see more videos that will help you do those things you never thought you could.